over here. Sarah, the owner of this magnificent 76 Dodge Commander motorhome, 75. Um, we're gonna do a uh, Holly Sniper fuel injection kit on it. And it's gonna be a whole lot of fun. So, here's the camper. It is so big I can't even get it into the, there we go, the full frame. And my God, this is gonna be fun. You excited? We're excited. All right, let's get rolling. <laughs> That is the last time she's gonna run with a carburetor. All right, first things first, we're going to disconnect all power to this. Um, unfortunately, it means we lose our air conditioner, which was nice while we had it. But disconnect all power so we don't fry anything, including the brand new sniper kit, which you know was several thousand dollars. Um, I don't know where these go to, but I did take a picture so I know the orientation of where they are. And um, I might try to put something on that so it doesn't arc because it's just the frame right there. But luckily, that's a nice solid ground point when we need need one. It's the 440 with the thermal quad on it. It's a uh, it's a fun little uh, little house. All right, so when you have something that you didn't put together and you're not quite sure where things go, always try to keep everything as organized as possible. I'll zip tie connections that go to the same terminal. Um, they all went to that guy there. I'll just zip tie them together because I don't know where they went. So I wanna make sure that I can keep track of where they went. Um, so these are all zip tied together. That was only one, so that's not really too bad. And then that was two, so I'll zip tie those together. And that's only one, so don't have to worry about that. Just use those little guys right there, sacrificial. You know, you're only using them just to keep it organized while you work on it. All right, so we're back. We we're just looking underneath. Uh, I apologize about the noise, but you should be able to hear us once we get under here. Half the battle with this is just finding out what has been done to make this truck, because hopefully you can hear me now. Um, 
you gotta find out what's been done to make this thing because this was kind of done on the fly. Um, someone made their own interesting holly pump with a bypass right there. I guess the pump is just a pusher to get everything to the motor from back here so that you wouldn't, you know, crank this thing forever. And, uh, you know, that's why it's bypassed. So that's the inlet right there. It goes up, it goes into that T, into the inside of the holly pump. And then you have that, which comes around, and goes in that line, which comes from the outlet of the pump, which is interesting. So we're gonna utilize these front um, fittings, which is perfect for the holly uh, fuel pump they supply. We're gonna drain it, just to make sure there's no garbage fuel in here. And then, where is it? Those two white lines, those are actually the fuel lines. Those are like some kind of plastic rubber um, fuel line. They're not gonna stand up to the PSI we need with the, uh, with the fuel injection pump. So we're gonna take those out and we're gonna run hard lines to the front. Luckily, they don't have to be that straight. We can kind of just unroll the coil and just get them to where we need it, put some flares on the end, and then, you know, do some basic adapting from, you know, the, the fuel injection hose that we do have to those. So we got that. And then we come up here to the front tank. Where we have an old Walboro pump. And about the same stuff. And then I'm gonna turn the flash on because I actually haven't seen on top of the tank. And not quite sure. Hang on one second. That might be where everything goes. I can't quite see. I'm just kind of looking from afar. I see where the fuel lines come from and go from. Unless, of course, they have something over here, which I'm filming blind. I'm just kind of using this as a something where I can stop it and look. But this is the, uh, I believe this is the auxiliary tank is what they're calling it, but I'd refer to this more as a main tank because this looks like what came from Dodge. So I'm going to review this and then we're going to come up with a game plan for running the new stuff. All right, and we're back. Of course, the second I decided to start recording, they started firing up the leaf blowers, but got our fuel lines front to back 50 feet because we're going to run from the tank to the switcher um, with just a couple short sections of rubber to um, to connect the fuel pumps in that. Got some new battery cables, Permatex orange to seal the O2 sensor bung onto there. Single flare tool just to give this something for the rubber lines to bite onto. Shrink wrap, some hold downs to hold the fuel lines to the floor of this, and the screws to hold them. Extra clamps just in case. There's two batteries on this thing, so four terminals. And then Holly supplies the NAFA part numbers for the filters you need pre and post. Um, there's no NAPA open by me right now, so Oh, it doesn't cross-reference them. And um, this, I believe, this is the pre, this is the post. So we're also gonna use these zip ties to identify what line is feed and what line is return. We'll probably do something like blue for feed and orange for return, you know. We'll write it down for them. And we're about to get underneath and start ripping out what's there emptying the uh, the gas tank because there is a drain so we'll do that just to help us out a little bit and we'll start running the lines front to back because that seems like it's going to be the hardest thing so uh yeah all right so we've started james is gonna drain the tank using that little bunghole right there i am taking care of the lines as you can see i already have one down and we have this interesting setup here. I think it's a bypass so that you're only using this. <coughs> Ugh, rust. 
I think this is a bypass so that when you just use this to prime the uh, the fuel system and uh, it seems like it works pretty well but I'm taking down the uh, the lines using this drain pan while I have it here just to drain what's in these lines so I can go up the length of this 20 something foot long thing and um, get rid of these so I can run these steel lines which will take their place and uh, well then we're gonna take this pump right here out and let's see how much is actually in this. I know this isn't big, but we're going to empty it and fill it into some uh, other pans. And yes, we're sure this is not. Wow, it's really annoying. Um, yes, we are sure that this is not black water, that this is gas. We're not going to have shit on us. Something's gonna come out. Oh god. This thing holds 50? 40? This tank? Yeah. I think this is a 50 gallon tank. I kinda think the the other one is a 50 gallon tank. Oh well. Um that's good looking. Uh wonderful. I have a silver. The fun part is going to be trying to clog this thing back up when it starts to get full, you so we can get angle. Yeah, I can. I can do it. Tell me when you want me to stop. That's not the clearest stuff I've ever seen, but it's not the worst stuff. It doesn't smell terrible. That's. Get it up to the filter line. Sure. We're at an angle. Uneven ground. Call that? That should be good. Let's see if the landscapers need some gas for their uh, equipment. Let's go get a uh, gas jug and a funnel. Mm -hmm. Grab the ones out of the back of my truck. Yeah, so that's our disposal plan right now. I'll probably just run it in whatever cars I have randomly. A little bit of bad gas never hurt anyone. A lot of it hurts people. So, we'll be back. Alright, so we are still working under here. And, uh, it's definitely making progress. We're 15 gallons emptied from the tank. We set up this little hose here to just drain from there and we'll get the little bit left from here. Um, after that we're going to remove this holly pump. We have the two fuel lines disconnected and we got them void of fuel so we have to run and follow them up through there and then take them down and run the, the new steel lines up through there uh, because they will hold the pressure much better. Um, so after a little more digging and looking, this right here runs the, to the generator that sits right above that muffler. Um, and this one here runs to the, the engine. Um, so that is why there's two outlets on this and there's a return that goes into the filler neck over there. So we'll use that return, we'll use this to feed the fuel pump, and then we'll shoot it up here. They have two fuel filters they want. They want a higher micron and a smaller micron with the pump sandwich in the middle, so we're gonna have to make a little bracket that comes down to hold the pump in place, uh, but that shouldn't be too hard. And then we'll feed everything through with fresh hose and fresh metal lines, so. On to the 20th gallon. Um, the gas in here isn't terrible, and to get rid of some of it, we will probably just run it in our cars. Um, so we just do that, and then we do... And back to draining, and thankfully, you can see through this one. I can see how much is in here. 
because the other one you couldn't. Gas manufacturers, if you make one where you can't see through it with no sight line, I hate you. One eternity later. All right, so we're here. This is that was number five, four. That was number five. This is number six. They're five gallons each. That's 30 gallons we've removed from the rear tank already. Um, it took us a little while, but we wound up taking the old fuel line off, um, which it's like a rubbery plastic fuel line, which I don't want to think about too hard. Um, it definitely would not have survived the the fuel induct. Uh, the I'm tired. I can't talk right now. It wouldn't survive the uh, the fuel injection pressures, so we wound up cutting it and routing it from the drain plug on that all the way up there and into here. And we just keep on one. Got this one ready. We're gonna dump these into our cars because we don't have that many of these things. Um, it might get to a point where we start flagging down people saying, "Hey, you want some gas?" Because. Uh, it's not stopping. Um, and then we have the front tank to do. So, fun. We will uh, be back in a bit. All right, day two. Um, as you know, yesterday we kind of just spent a whole bunch of time emptying that gas tank. And um, we decided to try something different this time. We, uh, we got one of the clickety clacks. One of those things. You just feed it into your gas can, feed it down. You hear the sound when it goes under gas. You just go like that. And then voila, you're pumping gas. Just don't let that air bubble get back. Oh, which means this might actually be pretty empty already. Yeah. So we've already taken one out, so we weren't on camera looking like fools more than we normally do. So we are uh, going to drain this tank, we're going to drop this, um, James is going to drop this one, I'm going to work on running the lines from front to back and back to front. Use our straightened out fuel line, we're going to do another stretch of it and um, hopefully it won't be too bad. Hopefully we can get this thing maybe fired up today. I doubt it, but hey man, optimism. So, we'll be back soon. Alright, so after lots of fighting, lots of prying, fighting with that, which was just grinding against the frame the whole entire way. Same with that. And this welded in trailer hitch extension. God, no one ever put a trailer on that. That's a bike rack only. We got the rear gas tank down. It took us about two hours. And a lot of cursing. Oh, yeah. A whole lot of cursing. Um, we curse whoever designed this auxiliary tank. We curse whoever welded this up there. We curse whoever did any of it. And go figure that the sender is in the farthest back corner that you can't really get to ever. Um, <laughs> there is a hole in the floor for the sender. Just for the sender. Um, but yeah. Um, I guess we could have gotten to it from there. But in our defense, there's a layer of floor covering it. So at one time there was a hole. And then you also see that part of the rear frame is just two by six, which is fun. Um, don't get rear-ended. RVs are wild, man. Um, I think from now on, when it comes to selecting projects, we're gonna pick either home or car, not both. We'll update you soon. So day two ended with uh, a more discoveries and trying to adapt to the situations that we have. Um, unfortunately with old cars, old vehicles like this, I don't know if you can call this a car, old houses, um, you know how it is. You basically run into many different things where, you know, you have something that 
was touched by 15 different people. Um, you know, it's a lot of discovery trying to find out what they did, what their intentions were, and how you can adapt to work with what you plan with what they have. Unfortunately for our needs, this rear fuel tank is in pretty terrible shape. Um, it won't work because we'd have to have probably about four different inlets that they have closed up. Um, and the easier solution right now is going to be getting a, uh, a fuel tank from a easily serviceable vehicle. Um, this will help Sarah and Jay on the road if they ever have a breakdown. They can get a fuel pump, or not a fuel pump, but a fuel tank, a fuel sender, um, anything related to that from a vehicle. Um, based on the measurements we took and everything that we met, you know, looked online, looks like a 79, 78, 79 Bronco rear gas tank would be the best bet because it holds 33 gallons. Um, the fuel tank sender is right up front so you can get to it. We can make a bracket to hold it, bolt it into the frame, have it nice and secure, and it'll still be functionally the same. Um, it'll have a little less capacity, but we can actually work a working fuel gauge into it because, you know, that fuel sender, we don't know anything about it. Um, trying to get it to work with the factory gauge. We don't even know if the factory gauge works. Um, you know, it's going to be tough. So we can get a fuel sender, fuel tank, basically a whole kit from Jeff's Bronco Graveyard for about $400. Have it shipped here. We can install it. We can wire up an auto meter fuel gauge and have an independent fuel gauge for the rear see if we can get the fuel gauge for the front tank to work and at least that one's a factory tank to this so if they do go to somewhere who works on this they can say it's a 75 dodge m400 chassis that's the factory side saddle tank um and you're able to to cross reference parts um we're gonna have like i said a, a notebook probably a binder you know write down everything we did everything that's in there what parts came from what what color wire goes where so it's going to be easy for someone who did not work on this to figure out what's going on we're going to take out all the old fuel lines that are in there um so that people don't go looking and chasing dead ends like we've been doing um there's about six different fuel lines that go to two different fuel tank switchers that are tied into each other and are collapsed and we don't know if they work um, so we're going to eliminate all that. We're going to go with the Holly switcher and we're just going to make it simple one fuel system and we're going to more work in the long in the short term, but easier in the long run for us, for the next person who has to work on it and for Sarah and Jay to be able to go cross country. And if something does happen, it's going to be easy, accessible parts. Um, so we are, uh, we're signing off for today. We're waiting for them to give us the thumbs up, thumbs down on whether or not they want to do that. Uh, because option number two is we run just a front tank for the sniper and we get them like a boat fuel tank for the generator and tuck it away into one of the other uh, storage cubbies and say, plug this in here when you're ready to use a generator, put it on the, uh, the deck on the back. And, um, you know, we'll see what they say. It's, uh, the Bronco tank I think is going to be the best, best bet. Um, it's dimensionally the best one we can get. The fuel filler is in the right spot. So we'll see. Um, and we'll probably be back at this a little bit tomorrow to start taking the front tank down and to keep on going. Um, once we figure out the front tank stuff we're, and finish eliminating all the old fuel lines that are in there, we're going to uh, keep moving until they tell us what to do with the rear tank. So. See ya. We'll be on for the uh, the next episode where we continue on with it.